Hey guys, Vladimir here again with another Fusion 360 tutorial and today we are going to design a replacement handle for this file cabinet drawer. So as you can see I've been missing this handle for this top drawer here and so for the last I don't know how many years the way I actually open this top drawer is first I have to open the bottom and kind of reach in here open the top and then close the bottom and then I can finally pull this out. So. I don't know how long I've been telling myself that I need to go ahead and design and 3D print a handle so I'm finally getting uh, around to doing that today. So I decided to do a tutorial uh, showing you guys uh, the whole process. Now there's multiple ways I could have tackled this but I thought this would be a great project to demonstrate the loft command. The loft command is a very powerful feature in Fusion 360 as I'll demonstrate shortly. So after designing this I sent it to my printer and printed it using black PLA which ended up blending nicely with the rest of the furniture. Now installing it just simply involved screwing in the two screws which uh, lined up nicely and now it's a lot easier opening and closing my drawer. I don't know why I didn't do this a lot sooner. The handle we're going to design starts off wide on the sides and then tapers to a skinnier profile in the center. Alright, let's go ahead now and jump into the Fusion 360 design. We'll begin with a new sketch on our XY plane. And I measured the distance between the two screw holes to be 96 millimeters. So I'm going to begin with a line. I'm just going to draw it across here and I'm going to make that uh, 96 millimeters and hit enter. Now I want this line to be centered uh, between the origin here. So I'm going to grab my midpoint constraint, click on the line and click on the origin and that's going to go ahead and center that. Next I'm going to draw a line from this point going straight down and I'm going to make that 24 millimeters. Now the reason for this line is because the uh, handle as it comes and curves down that flat surface of the handle here where the uh, oh, screw hole is going to be uh, in is I measured that flat surface to be 24 millimeters from here. So we're going to create that line and then we're going to select it and hit X to make it a construction line. All right, next I'm going to draw an arc going here. So I'm going to go to sketch arc, grab my three point arc, click the end point here, and then just for now we're going to put it somewhere here and then give it just a little bit of a bulge. So that third click is going to be that bulge and we'll go ahead and set that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add some more constraints. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and do some more constraints. But I'll warn you ahead of time that things are going to end up breaking and I'm doing this on purpose uh, to make a point. So uh, I want this line to be tangent to this line. And actually, I don't need this little extra um, slit right here. So I'm going to hit T for trim and just take that off. And you see this black line here, don't get confused, that's actually the dimension. So if I hit escape and I move, um, actually move this dimension across, we see, you know, you can see that it's just putting that line where that dimension is. You can always move these over. Um, uh, sometimes it can get confusing of what's your lines and what's your dimensions. Okay, so now we have this arc and this line here. And I'm going to grab my tangent constraint because I want it to be tangent to, so I can have a nice curve going here. So I'll click on the arc and click on the line. Notice how it went ahead and it gave me that constraint, but it did that by making this line all crooked. So let's undo that. And what I want to happen is this line to stay perfectly straight, horizontal. So uh, we'll go ahead and grab a horizontal constraint, apply it to this line. Okay, now let's try that tangency again. So we'll hit this, the arc and the line. And so it kept the line straight, but it ended up moving this line across, um, moving this down. So our dimension here is, is all screwed up. Um, but that's okay, we're gonna leave that for now. And a point I wanna also make is, a lot of times it's better to set your dimensions in reference to your origin. Uh, because as things begin breaking and moving, um, it can affect your other sketches uh, but the, the origin is always going to stay in place so I'm just going to hit escape let's take this off and I'm going to hit D for dimension and I want this to be dimension for my origin so I'm going to move it straight down until it gives me that horizontal dimension and I want that to be that 48 millimeters and then I'm going to hit that point again come from the origin 
in that vertical dimension, I want that to be 24. And I don't need this line right here anymore. So I'm just going to delete that. So now that that's in place, let's we see that this line is still blue, meaning, you know, it's still not fully constrained, we can move it and we see the only thing that moves now is this point here. So let's go ahead and lock that into place. I'm going to hit the dimension between that and the midpoint. And we're going to make that 24 millimeters. And now everything is locked into place. So we have 24 millimeters going out this way and then this arc here, which is 24 millimeters from uh, this point here, our origin. Okay, so we have this curve and this arc. Well, let's go ahead and mirror this curve on the other side. So we'll go to sketch, go to mirror, select this arc, our mirror line. Actually, we need to draw a mirror line because we don't have one in yet. So let's do that. I'm going to hit L for line, go straight up here make that uh, construction line by hitting X. And now let's try that mirror again. So we'll go to mirror. Uh, our object is going to be this arc and then our mirror line is going to be what we just created. There it goes. I'm going to click OK. I don't need this little extra section here. So I'm going to hit T for trim and trim that out. OK, so now we'll move this up. So we have basically this arc with this line here and then we mirrored that arc here. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to draw a line from this point here going across. And I'm going to make that a construction line. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to use that line to create a construction plane. So, okay, that's all I need for this sketch right now. So I'm going to hit stop sketch. And I want to draw here on this line. So I want to make a plane first. So I'm going to go to construct. I'm going to go to plane at angle. And then I'm going to choose this line and you can see it's going to give me a horizontal plane but I can go in and enter an angle so I want that to be actually 90 degrees and you see a flip I'm gonna hit OK so now I'm gonna to go to sketch choose that plane and be careful here because it gives you an origin here but that's not where I want to draw I want to draw actually right at this point here where that arc meets so I'm gonna hit P for project and I'm gonna project in that point, click OK. Now I'm going to grab a center rectangle and let's go to a front view. I'm going to draw this rectangle and I measured the other handle. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, similar to that, which is going to be, let's do 15 millimeters across by 22 millimeters tall. And I'm going to go ahead and put in some fillets on there. So we'll go down to fillet. And I'm just going to click each of these corners and do all four as a fill. And you can see it's got a radius of four. I'm going to change that to five. And that's that, that's actually going to break it. Um, so let's, uh, let's try three. Looks good. We'll go back to four. Four is fine. Um, so we'll hit four, click OK. And I want to mirror this on this side. So we're going to do that same approach where we're going to draw a uh, construction line uh, and then mirror it. So first let's project to this point here. So I'm going to hit P for project, grab that center point, click OK. And then I'm going to draw a line from here straight up, make that a construction line. And let's go to sketch, uh, go down to mirror. And I'm just going to double click on this entire selection. So it'll give me that perimeter and then choose my mirror line from this box, click OK. And there we go. So we have these two profiles here. I'm going to click on stop sketch. And next I want to draw a profile here as well. And to do that, I can just grab my origin since I placed this right in the middle. And I'm going to go to create sketch and then choose that plane. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to grab a a rectangle center rectangle start at the center there this is going to be skinnier it's going to be we're going to make this five millimeters by 22 and we're going to also put in some fillets there so we'll do the same thing we're just going to do these one millimeter fillets just to give it a nice round look hit enter click stop sketch and let's go back okay so now we're ready to go ahead and apply some lofts so we'll get rid of origin there and then we're going to go to create and go to loft so with the loft tool we get this box and the first thing i'm going to do is select my profiles that i want to loft so i'm going to cl click this one 
the second one, and then this third one. We see we get a nice curve there that lofts all three profiles. Um, and that actually looks really nice. I actually might like this handle a little bit better. But I'm trying to get it to match uh, my original handle, so I need it to actually follow this curve that I made. So what I can do is I'm going to, for guide type, I'm going to go to center line and then I get to select my rail. So that's going to be my rail, what that um, the arc and line that I created. So once I click on that, it's gonna take that loft and make it follow that profile nicely. So that looks good, I'm gonna click OK. And there's my handle. Now we just need to go in and make these screw holes. So I can create a sketch on this surface here and create my holes. But what I'm going to do is actually, uh, I already have a sketch on that plane, and that's that second sketch we did when we drew these profiles. So I'm just gonna go to my timeline and double click it. And I'm gonna hit C for a circle, and I can actually use that center point and go ahead and draw a circle here. I'll make that four millimeters. Now you wanna measure the thickness of the screw you're gonna be using. In my case, it's gonna be um, four millimeters. So I'm gonna hit enter there and then I'm just gonna go ahead and mirror that circle to the other side so I'll select my circle and then select my mirror line which is here and that'll show me a preview of that circle click OK and to verify these dimensions I can click D for dimension and click on both circles and show that okay it's a, it's gonna tell me it's over constraint but that's fine I just want to verify that that's 96 millimeters and nothing changed so that looks good I'm gonna click on stop sketch and I can go to my browser here and display that sketch too so I can see my circles hit E for extrude and I'm gonna click on both of these circles and I'm gonna go in let's go to a top view here and I'm gonna drag these in now you want to make sure you have enough clearance for your screw. In my case, I measured it's going to go in about 10 millimeters. Actually, that's going to be a, a negative 10. So let's change that. We want it to go inwards. And I'm actually going to go negative 11 just to give it a little bit of a, a little clearance room there. Um, so I'll do negative 11, click OK, and I've got my holes there. Let's get rid of sketches. And there's my handle with my screw holes ready to be mounted. So let's go ahead and send this to the printer and see how well it prints. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to learn more, make sure to check out my website at desktopmakes.com where you'll find full courses on designing for 3D printing with Fusion 360.